The easiest way to get identified in Identity Manager is to use the system user. A system user is a One Identity Manager account. The One Identity Manager account itself, it's member of some permission groups. The permission groups gets all the permissions assigned that exist in Identity Manager and you need for your specific permission situation. A system user itself, as mentioned, is an account. And with that, if you need the system user, you need a particular account per user which is not really a nice thing, especially because we have many other systems with accounts. Why the hell we should have an identity manager as well an account for everyone? And because of that exists other authentication information. With this, system users are typically development account. That means people who have admin rights and identity manager do development or something like that. They will get their system user to do something. Let's start with the plain system user. As you can see here, I selected InDesigner on the left-hand side, Hervik, which is my system user in that specific system. And you can as well see here in the middle of the screen, there are many assigned permission groups. That is because Hervik is a super user. And a little bit down below, you can as well see that there is a password stored in the database, which is not the best guess. It is encrypted, as you can see, but to store passwords in a database is always something you should normally avoid if this is possible. Nevertheless, the system user Hervik, it's a developer account, it's a super user, and I can use it to log in. To do so, I just switch to the manager. Here we are. And on the manager, there's the logging mask open. And as you can see, there's the database connection. And the next step here is to switch from an authentication module, employee role based, just to a system user. And uh, with a system user, I can enter now the name of that specific system user, which is Hervik. And I need as well a password. And especially for that specific system user, I already have deleted the password and I can connect. So as you can see, I'm now signed in and on the right lower side, you can see it's a system user. This is the system user Hervik, which is currently signed in. Display name is Hervik as well. And um, you can see all the stuff around here. We will talk about system users and their permissions later. That means in chapter two of this specific series. But that is what I like to show you to use a system user to sign in, the, for example, the manager. A little bit different as the system user authentication we discussed before is the identity system user based authentication. The idea is to connect the identity, that means the person object, with the system user. The reason for that is pretty easy. Remember what we discussed in the past. We like to avoid that people needs an account in Identity Manager. And I'm talking about business people. To get that done, I like to use the system user and the permissions the system user already have as a role. That means I like to assign the system user, for example, to an identity object. This is something different than just to have an account somewhere because I can use the same account to get it assigned to a lot of different people. The good message is in difference to a functional account where all the data modifications gets locked as the functional account so that nobody knows who was doing the change, especially because 10 people are using the same account. This way of authentication, that means to assign the system user to a person object, I can see all the data modifications in the name of the identity. That means the user is changing something, but he will do that with the permission set of the assigned system user. And so we can use this specific system user as a role just to be assigned to something and to get permissions from there. It is a second role type thing because remember, we will as well talk about application roles, which allow us to do the same. But with system users, sometimes things are a little bit easier. And in reality, the system user assignment will be often used, especially in situations where we talk about business developers or data administrators, people with more privileges than the normal business user. And these guys will then get just one system user dialog assigned and to avoid that everybody of them needs its own system user and we have to double and triple the permission set, we can just use this system user assignments. Therefore, back to the picture, the permission set of the identity manager is assigned to permission groups. The permission groups are assigned to system users and this system user then could be assigned to an identity object.
in this step, I like to sign in as an identity and I want to do that not role based. I want to do it system user based. That means I will use the system user as a role to assign my permissions to the identity. To do so, the first thing I have to do is I have to step into designer. Here we are and in designer. I go to the base data configuration section and there to the authentication modules. And as you can see, there is my employee authentication module. As we as well can see, maybe here, that one, it's not enabled. That means I cannot use it right now. To do so, the only thing I have to do is I have to go to the properties and here I have just to say, let's enable that. It's true. I have to store that in my database to ensure that the change is already there. Perfect. And now I can use the person authenticator. Nothing more to do here. The only thing I have to ensure is that the person I will use to sign in do have a system user assigned as a role. Therefore, I switch back to the manager. Here we are signed in with a system user like we did that in the lecture before. Here is uh, the employee section. I selected uh, the account of Herwig Abele. Here we are. This is an identity. And if I step into that identity, I can see on the Miscellangelist tab, here we are, the system user Herwig assigned. This is necessary to be able to sign in as a person. The reason is, this system user now is assigned to the identity of Herwig Abele. And with that, it gets the permissions at the end of this particular system user. So you can as well select another one, as you can see here, for example, training or VI admin. But I will assign the system user Herwig. That is exactly the same I will see then if I use the system user Herwig itself. But this time I get recognized as something other else, which is the identity of Herwig. To do so, I have to add the system user into here. That is that. And I can as well set a password. This password here is the password stored in the person table. And it is as well encrypted like the other. And it is the password to be used with the identity. Nothing to do with the Herwig system user. Remember, in our system, Herwig system user had no password. We saw that before. Now I will use the identity of Herwig, and here I will use the password. The second thing I have to know if I do something like that is what account, that means what logging information I have to use for my person login. And to do so, I have to look to the central user account. That is that one here. And Herwig ABE is the central account I can use here. And to do so, I just store my changes. Here we are. I Relog in in the manager, get my logging mask. Here we are. I select the authenticator of employee, which is here. And to make that possible, I have this time not to use the system user because I'm logging in as identity. Here I have to use the central account, which is Herwig ABE and the password I typed in. And I get access to the manager. I, it looks exactly like before. The reason for that is from a permission perspective, it is the same. First time I was logged in as system user. Last time I was logged in as person, but with the same credentials as the system user before. The only difference is that here on the right lower, you can now see I'm in there as system user Herwig, but I get a display name Abelik.Herwig, which is the identity. That means at the end stored is the identity. You can see that here, employee user ID. It's now the Herwig account, which is now the identity. Yeah, to ensure that it is correct what I'm telling you, I just copy the whole thing, switch into my SQL, select from person where UID person equals and here is the UID. And if I step into that, you can see I get one record back and a wonder, a wonder. It is the record of Mr. Abele with a department assigned and so on. This is exactly what I at the end expect. And this is a person login, just using a system user as a role to assign permissions to the identity.